wow, wouldn't it be great if someone had a master book about everything in ham radio? I mean, it could be a huge book. There's so much to learn. Maybe it would take multiple volumes. I mean, you probably couldn't do it in one volume. Maybe you have like five or maybe even six volumes. Yeah, that sounds about right. Who could do something like that? Maybe they could get hams to contribute to the handbook. I mean, this handbook could be great for like somebody that just, just got their license, you know, a new tech, doesn't know what to do. Or even that old guy like me that's been a licensed ham for a while. I mean, say I wanted to make a Van Dipole, where could I get a picture of see how this looks? Or what they call it, like a parallel Van Dipole. What if I wanted to do an NVIS dipole? Where would I find information on this stuff? I mean, there's got to be one place I can get all this information. Maybe I'd want to make a Yagi. Where could I get all that information from? Oh, I got it. I know who's done this. All right, so who does offer this? That would be the ARRL. If you look here, they have the ARRL handbook for 2022. It's a six volume book set, or, or you can buy it in the handbook 2022 soft cover, which is everything in one big book. I prefer the, uh, the multiple books. So it's just a little easier to handle. So let's just click on here and see what it says. If we go in here, uh, it's a six volume book set, uh, key topics, radio electronics and theory and principles, uh, circuit design and equipment, radio signal transmission, propagation, digital and analog modulation and protocols, antennas and transmission lines, construction practices. Now there's some new print stuff here. If you guys go into the site here, I want to get into other things here. Um, I do want to show you what we're going to find out about that, uh, that Yagi antenna and what kind of information the book has in it. So if just go to the website and check this out. All right. Uh, 21.6 Yagi antennas. Uh, this is just one of the many chapters on different types of antennas here. And the Yagi is actually a Yagi Uda beam. And that is named after the two Japanese inventors of this antenna. And the, the advantages to a, uh, a Yagi antenna is, is gain over a dipole. And uh, it just shows your patterns over here. Uh, down here, it shows this is your overhead and this is your gain. Most of your gain is forward. And uh, that's what you're looking for. It has a little bit of gain to the back, but for the most part, it's got front to back rejection and side to side rejection. Yagis are really quiet because they're not picking up 360 degrees of noise. Over here, we sh we're looking at uh, Yagi gain front to back ratio, and it's, it just goes down through here and tells your back to fr your front to back ratio is uh, like I live, for ex for example, I live on the uh, the west coast. And I don't have a whole lot of noise to the back of me. So if I was going to build my own Yagi, I might actually choose to build it for more gain and less front to back because I don't have the uh, noise to the back of me. Okay. You can start with a two element beam. That's the most simple. And then all your big, a lot of your big, big beams, like say for 40 meters, a lot of times people only have room for a, uh, for a two element because the, they get really, really big. Now you're a little small and you're, you're two meters and 70 centimeters. A lot of times you'll have multiple, like five or six or eight or 10 or 12 elements. And the more elements you put on, the more gain you get after about the third or fourth element, the, the gain is not as much as it usually is. So with just the first two, but uh, just keep that in mind as you go lower in the bands, they get really, really big. But down here, it goes into standard sizes of aluminum tubing. Now, tubing is different than pipe. Tubing is usually what you would use for most of your uh, your antennas. And they're, they're, what they do is they, they tell you 3 16 quarter. And these go in an order where they will probably fit in inside of each other because you want to keep your antenna light. If you, if you read through all these chapters, I can't read all of it. I don't have enough time to tell you everything. But um, it basically is telling your inner and outer diameters. If you look up here, your inner diameter, your outer diameter, your wall thickness, and approximate weight per foot per length. Okay. And this just gives you a, a chart here that kind of helps you out with uh, fitting multiple sizes of tubing together to make your length for your Yagis. They can be very, very big. And then it comes down into in here to construction of Yagi antennas. And it talks about, uh, they, they talk about the antenna, the 60, 61 T6 aluminum 
Uh, material is relatively strong and has a good workability. And that's what you're looking for. And some of the, it goes down here to say that some of the softer grades, 5051 and 303003, um, that, and that's, and then if you get up to the 70, 75, they're talking about how it's more brittle. So this 6061 is your best all around usually. Driven element is the element that has your, uh, your coax will actually connect to that somehow, uh, either straight to it or through a fitting. They talk about the different kinds of, of how you feed it over here. And then right here, they're showing ways of putting methods of connecting telescoping tubing sections to build beam elements. And then you have, you talk, they talk about boom material. Your boom material is going to be your biggest because that holds all the weight. And sometimes if you look like right here, 2154, um, sometimes they're so long and this is just a, a small drawing, but they're so long that you have to actually put some some guy lines down to them. And these would be something that is, that is not conductive. Okay. And that will, uh, help hold the ends of it. The, the straighter, the better for these things. The, then it goes into the table 21.6, uh, 10 meter optimized Jaggy design. So they even give you some designs in here and they do 10, uh, 12. If you go on down, there's uh, 15, uh, 17, uh, my favorite band right now because it's one of the better DX bands is 20. So they give you quite a few different uh, charts here to, to look into and then it'll tell you, okay, let's just take for 12 meters. There's a three element, a four element, and a five element. Okay. And so your gain for three element, we'll just talk, we'll talk about DBI and that's the lower one. It's 7.5. And when you go to four, it's 8.5 and then 9.5. So you see your first three, you get seven and a half, but after that, it's like one DBI. It's not a, for, a perfect uh, world on all this. And these charts just give you a nice baseline to uh, start uh, your build by. And if you look up here, here's some of that construction we talked about earlier on how you construct them. So you have one direction for your, um, for your boom. And then the other direction this way, you can kind of see they got one installed there, or these would stall in these holes. And that's for your, to hold your elements on. So they're, they're fairly easy until you get really big. Uh, and then it comes down here, putting it all together. Okay. Then when you come into, um, how you're going to tune your, your, uh, Yagi, uh, you can do a simple dipole setup where it's a 50 ohm, where you just separate the two, the two pieces in the middle, just like you would your regular dipole, your wire end dipole. And that usually is a pretty easy one to build. Then you have a gamma gamma rod up here, and then you have your, uh, T match for matching your antenna. And then sometimes they'll actually use a, uh, a coax ballon to tune the antenna and there's all kinds of different charts on how to figure all that stuff out and then the next thing down here is 21.7 is quad and loop antennas and these I, this is one of the ones i want to build over here one of these quads one of these times they're pretty cool and they've they actually do really well from what i've heard so this is just a quick 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 overview of what is in these your six volumes from the uh, the handbook here Everybody should check this out. Even, I mean, this is great for new hams, but this is also great for older hams too. People that have been doing it for a while and this may not be sure. Ton of information in here, guys. So make sure you check all this stuff out. And I was sent the handbook for evaluation for this video. Oh, <laughs> hey, how long you guys been there? Hope I haven't been keeping you long. ARRL handbook. The 2022 version, pretty thick. So it's six volumes. It comes in either a single big book or six separate volumes. It is uh, November, so it's pretty close to Christmas. Maybe you guys should buy two sets, one for yourself and then five for your ham friends. But you say, Chuck, but wait, there's six. Yes, there is. You guys all have that friend that secretly likes ham radio but doesn't want to say so you catch him looking at your radio sometimes when you're when he thinks you're not looking and he's like whoa look at all this stuff and he's checking it out and everything well let's string a little bait in front of that guy let's uh let's throw it out there for him then we're gonna hook him and we're gonna reel him in and maybe he'll like the hobby so like i showed you guys there are six different handbooks here something for everybody. I think every ham, especially a new ham, would uh, get something from this for sure. I know I am going to, and I'm not, a, I'm, I'm a new ham, but not real new. Okay, for myself in the ARRL, 
think about buying these books. I think it'll be good for everybody. This is Chuck, KK6USY for Ham Radio Adventures. Be safe all, 73s. Catch you on the airways.